Our next speaker is me, and the title is You Were There. My father was born in 1903. I think I beat you all. 1903. Anyway, he grew up in a very poor in Chicago, a very poor, large family with seven brothers and sisters and a very ill mother and a father who had a problem with alcohol, my grandfather. His father also had a problem with change. I guess that's where I get it. He was an original Teamster when Teamsters were driving horses and carriages or horses and, and freight trucks. But when they moved to trucks, he refused to change and never worked another day in his life. Not a quality that my father learned because my father was the exact opposite in those terms because I can honestly say I never ever even heard of an opportunity where he had a chance to work had a chance to put in overtime, had a chance to do a separate job on the weekends when he turned it down. I don't think he ever turned down the opportunity to work more and earn more money for his family, not for his fun hobbies. And you know, His hobby was to buy a tractor and go road to tell the neighbor's yards. So he was not doing it for his own personal toy benefit, but because of that's what he, he believed. I think that might have come from, he went through the depression as a young adult, he used to talk about one year, he went every single day of the year out looking for a job and he looked from door morning to night without finding any success. He was the older brother and remember father, well, his father wasn't very responsible, so he felt a responsibility to the family. But he, like I said, he never turned down an opportunity to work. I learned that from him. I think at 12, I was a caddy at the, nearby golf course, working my way through various jobs. I worked 20 to 25 hours a week during the school year when maybe I should have been studying, but I was working at 20 to 25 hours a week because believe it or not, my parents allowed me to keep half of every dollar i made and set aside the rest of it for college. I wasn't too happy about that, but I, that's what encouraged me to work more and be more responsible. By the time I graduated from high school, at one point I had a job for at least a couple of years where I averaged 66 hours a week working because I never turned down the opportunity to work overtime. My father was a tough, strong, hard man. I don't think I ever saw him admit to pain. I never saw him cry or feel depressed about anything. And he would just put up with it and take care of it and do, do the business that he had to do. He was uh, strong. He was so strong that, well, one of the jobs he had during the Depression was tearing apart automobiles with a sledgehammer. Rather than nowadays, they just crush them up. So strong that at the time he was in his 80s, his grip was stronger than mine ever was in my life. And I was a weightlifter for a number of years. He was uneducated, but that doesn't mean that he was unintelligent. He only went to the third grade in person, he did some night school, got some training in electronics and became a wizard at electronics. He uh, used to claim he thought he invented the clock radio because he had one before there was such a thing. He built our television from pieces, not from a kit, from pieces. He made our first television with that. I once saw him light up a light bulb in his hand with no wires. I had to convince me how that was done, but he did it. Pretty fun and pretty special. When I decided to go off to, to college, oh, when I wanted to buy a car, he said, yeah, sure, go ahead. Want to buy a car, go ahead. When you get the money and the money for insurance, you can have a car. No more driving the family car for me. That If you wanted it, you had to earn it. On the other hand, he gave me that level of responsibility. Once I had done my chores, once I had done the things that needed to be done, I had more freedom than the typical other child. I could ride my bicycle at 12 or 14, 20, 15, 20 miles into town, and there was no complaint about whether I was responsible enough to do that. They expected me to do it. In seventh grade, I got a 22 caliber rifle. In the eighth grade, a 12 gauge shotgun, went off hunting rabbits and so on in, in the rural neighborhood where we were. And so I had, was given that responsibility. Probably hardly ever had a curfew. I better not get into trouble. I mean, I definitely 
And I followed that up with my daughter too. You get in trouble, I may come out and bail you out on Monday, but you better stay out of trouble this weekend because I'm not going to be available to get you out of it. I'm going to make sure you stay out of it in the first place. I learned a lot of responsibility, but it was tough. I had very negative feelings about my father. As I said, like people have said in the past, never get, was told, I love you. Never heard anything positive, only criticism and suggestions where you might improve. And but he was there. He was there to help me show me how to fix my car when there was something wrong, not to fix it for me and not to do it for me, but show me. He was there to help me ride a bicycle, except that he gave me a, a large, large bicycle, but refused to allow me to try training wheels. And so that made me put it off for a while. He provided so many chores for me during the summer because he didn't want me to be useless that I couldn't possibly finish them before noon every day in the summer during quote summer vacation but I also learned to do a lot of things I learned to take care of the things that I needed to take care of and do the things I needed to do and fix my own equipment and and that was that was pretty impressive now I don't want this to sound as a negative thing but even though even in high school I remember believe it or not conjuring how could i fantasize how could i do him in and get away with it because we had such a poor relationship but i'm not here to give a negative speech about him because i'm actually here to thank him and thank him for being there when i see as in bob anderson's presentation the negative impacts of not having your father there as responsible even my mother as a nurse, we would have lived in a little apartment in the city of Chicago with all kinds of negative temptations. Instead of living in a, our own house out in a rural area where I could walk in the woods and do all kinds of things like that and have that, respons that responsibility of doing things. I remember I didn't go to college right away. And when I went to college and struggled to make sure I got through it with much help from my wife and others, that when I graduated, probably the most hurtful thing he ever said to me was all that education, you can tell he didn't have much himself, all that education and all you're gonna do is teach with a disdain and he probably expected me to have some kind of fancy office with my education, but he was there. Without him being there, I would not have had the opportunity to do the things that I did. Without him being there, my life would have been so significantly different. And he allowed me to have a life that I have and I do appreciate it. And at this point, it's a good time for me to make a public acknowledgement. Thank you, Dad. I know we always had a hard time communicating, but thank you, Dad, for being there. And I know I, I really appreciate that, and I love you.